Ladies and gentlemen, a dear friend and a big star, would you welcome the most talented Mr. Rich Little, ladies and gentlemen. Rich Little! I was frantically trying to do an impression back there of Alicia. I did not have a sexual relationship with Fivish Finkel. Not one single time. I did not do anything wrong, and I promise never to do it again. I did have a sexual relationship with Monica Linsky, which I regret. In fact, it was wrong. However, I didn't inhale. <laughs> I think the most important thing today in marriage is trust. And once you know how to fake that, you've got it made, baby. Do you know, on top of all my problems, what's been happening to me lately? Would you believe that yesterday I got a call from a sperm bank here in Washington? They had the gall to call me up and ask me to make a donation. I said, I'm sorry, I, I already gave it the office. You saw that coming, didn't you? I think we should concern ourselves with more important issues than my sexual escapades. I think we should concentrate on social security, crime, cost of living, constipation. These are the things that, I'm sorry, conservation. <laughs> conservation. Did I say constipation? I'm sorry, I was, I was thinking of the grand jury. I am very, very interested in conservation. I proposed to Congress just the other day two conservation bills. The first one concerns water, and the second one concerns gas. Now, if Congress doesn't pass water, <laughs> well, then they're sure to pass gas. <laughs> And I hope they don't make a big stink about it. <laughs> poor Bill Clinton. God, poor Bill Clinton. I don't do that great a Bill Clinton, but what the hell, he wrote a lot of great material for me. So like Listen, I am delighted to be here tonight. I'm an impersonator, an impressionist, mimic, satirist. I've been called a lot of things for a lot of years. I would like to do, because I do around 200 impressions. And I would like to do tonight, though, three or four of my all-time favorites. Because people are always saying to me, Rich, you know, you do all these celebrities, but who do you like to do? Who are your favorites? All right, I'm going to do my favorites for you. My favorite actor in movies today, there's no doubt about it, Jack Nicholson. You like Jack Nicholson? <laughs> I like Jack because he has an attitude. Don't you love people with an attitude? You know any lawyers? All right, Jack Nicholson. I'm walking through the cracks. Hey, how the hell are you, man? You guys are looking pretty good. Listen, did you turkeys hear the news? It was on all the papers this morning. Yesterday, a Cuban bomber pilot, the guy's name was Juan Valdez. I got to tell you, man, I got to tell you, this guy, Juan Valdez, actually buzzed the Capitol building with his plane while Congress was in session. And in this morning's paper, the headline read, 
One. <laughs> this is bad. I. <laughs> One. Flew over the cuckoo's nest. <laughs> did you see that coming at all? You did? Good. Anyway, if you thought that was pretty corny, stick around. What do you see was coming up next? I know this is true because what the hell, I've seen all this before. That's why sometimes I laugh, because, you know, I know, I know what's coming next. Now, another actor I like almost as much as Jack Nicholson is Clint Eastwood. Do you like Clint? Or as I call him, Squint Eastwood. How the hell does this guy see? I can't see a damn thing. All right. Let's do something unusual with Clint Eastwood. How about we have Clint Eastwood as the Tidy Bowl Man? I know what you're thinking. Were there four flushes or were there five? To tell you the truth in all the confusion, I can't seem to remember myself. But seeing this as the most powerful toilet bowl in the country, capable of blowing a man's ass clean off, you got to ask yourself, do you feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Can I take a dumb punk? Go ahead. Wrong. <laughs> Go ahead. Make my bidet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't believe he said that. Make my bidet. Well, I told you it'd get worse, didn't I? See, I did warn you people about it getting worse. See, one thing I will never do up here in this stage tonight is I will never lie to you people. I will never, uh, I will never, I will never tell a lie. You people can trust me. You people can trust me. Jesus Christ, I'm having a jowl movement. <laughs> All right. You know who that was? Really? Tricky Dicky Nixon. Good, good for you people. Boy, do I remember him. I did him so much back in the 70s, I swear my face was wearing out. Imagine doing this for a living. You know? God, my own parents tried to have me impeached three times. But I love to do Nixon. Nixon was great to me. I made a lot of money doing Nixon. You know, I was just thinking the other day, what's, what was, what's going on right now politically? Richard Nixon's starting to look pretty good, isn't he? <laughs> He's looking better all the time. At this rate, he should be a saint by the end of the century. <laughs> saint Tricky. Better than St. Dick. <laughs> now, we'll leave that for Clinton. But anyway, I just... <clears throat> All right. Now, my favorite actor on the screen today, Jack Nicholson. Jack's great. Now, can you guess who my favorite old-time actor is? Of a body of work going back maybe 40 or 50 years. Maybe more. Who would you say it is? No, it's not. not uh, that's good. Charles Durning? He's good. He's good. Who? Jimmy Stewart. Absolutely. Jimmy Stewart. Love Jim. Well, who doesn't like Jimmy Stewart, huh? Everybody's got a favorite Jimmy Stewart movie. Now, if I was going to pick a dramatic movie that Jimmy made, 
you look at all the pictures he made, I would probably pick Anatomy of a Murder. Do you remember that one? Where he played the part of a small town lawyer? It was marvelous in this movie. There's a great speech in Anatomy of a Murder where Jimmy says, Now, now Mr. Twickens, I, I did, did you or did you not, on the date in question or at any other time previously or subsequently say or intimate to the defendant or anyone else, whether friend or acquaintance or in fact a stranger, that the statement imputed to you, whether just or unjust and denied by the plaintiff, was a matter of no moment or otherwise. Now, now, now did you or did you not? <laughs> I, I, I don't know, would you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> now there's a guy from the past, you know who that is? Very good, my kind of people here tonight. Good, Paul Lynn from Hollywood Squares. You remember him? I guess if you're under 30, you have no idea who we're talking about here. The sad thing is they don't care. How would you explain to a young person, Paul Lynn? Be very, very difficult, you know. He always, he always looked like he was sucking on a bad lemon, you know. Disgusting. <laughs> I, I used to do that first version of Hollywood Squares, the one with Peter Marshall. Remember, Paul was always in the center square. Now, I did that show very early in my career. I did that show for about 10 or 12 years, and I had more darn fun on that show, Hollywood Squares. God, we had fun. I used to sit usually up on the top right-hand square which was about 30 feet off the ground, because they built those squares, you know. If you're up on top, you're about 30 feet off the ground. I was opposite Wally Cox, do you remember him? And then down below him was Charlie Weaver in the corner, and then when he passed on, George Goble took his spot there. And Paul, as I said, was always on the center square. Do you know there were nights because of Paul Lynn? This is true. I darn near fell out of the square. <laughs> I would have killed myself. I used to hang onto the desk in front of me. Thank God for those desks. They were bolted into the floor. This saved my life. We lost a lot of good people on that show. <laughs> you never heard about this, but they went right out of the square in there. Never heard of again. Paul was funny. God, he was funny. He had the ability of not only being funny, but he was quick. He was so fast with his answers. So you had to really be on your toes, you know. And as soon as Peter Marshall went to Paul Lynn, you got ready for Paul's answer because he would usually destroy you. The funniest one-liner I ever heard him throw on Hollywood Squares, though, in 12 years. This, this one really stands out. I remember this more than anyone any other answer because they were picking people up for 20 minutes. Peter Marshall said, Paul, we have a cooking question for you. In preparing chicken tetrasini properly, you should always remove something from the chicken first. What is it? And Paul said, <laughs> the rooster. <laughs> That's the closest I ever came to going out of the square. We lost three people on that alone. It just went right out, and instantly killed, and nobody gave a damn. We were all laughing so hard. It just kind of swept them out of the studio. But those people went with smiles on their faces. The rooster. But he was quick. As I said, fast, you know. Remember another night, Peter Marshall said, Paul, can you get an elephant drunk? He said, yes, but you'll never get it up to your apartment. <laughs> ah. I could do a whole show of these. I really could. Because I, I, I used to write these down. You know, these are the ones I really remember. There was another one. Oh, yeah. Paul, when a man, when a man gives a great performance, it's customary to say, bravo, bravo. What do you say when a woman gives a great performance? And Paul said, mind if I smoke? <laughs> <laughs> and then Peter Marshall said, oh, Paul, do you usually smoke after sex? He said, I don't know, I never look. <laughs> I, just, I steam a little. <laughs> oh, God, I'm a great screamer. I'm sorry, steamer. Steamer. 
It was funny. One more, one more, and then I'll get on to something else. Paul, another cooking question. According to the World Cookbook, is it all right to stuff a goose with prunes? <laughs> oh, sure, but for God's sake, don't let it fly. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Come, that damn goose. Shit. Oh. Funny man, Paul. Lynn. One of the funniest men I have ever met in my life. He died much too soon. He really did. Of course, they would have put him in a home, I think, eventually. He was, he was, he was great. Now, another guy that I love to do, I'm doing some of my favorites for you here tonight, is that boring man that you see at the end of 60 Minutes every week. You know who I'm talking about? Andy Rooney. Mr. Excitement. A bundle of laughs. God, it's like watching a casket warp. <laughs> he goes on and on, doesn't he? I mean, he's boring, but even though he's kind of boring, he does make us think, because he says interesting things. Andy Rooney is 60 minutes. Do you ever wonder when it rains why sheep don't shrink? Have you ever thought about that? Now, I know that's pretty stupid, but damn it, it is food for thought, isn't it? You know? One night I was up till about four in the morning thinking about that. Yeah, that's right. Wool. Wool shrinks. Why don't you? Anyway. You know, if you wrote a book, if you wrote a book about failures and it didn't sell, would it be considered a success? Another thing I've always been curious about, who's absorbing senior? <laughs> and listen, why don't, why don't they make airplanes out of the same material they use to make the black box? And why do gas stations, why do gas stations always lock their bathrooms? Have you ever noticed this? You're on a trip and you have to get a damn key from somebody. I suppose they're afraid somebody might break in and clean them. <laughs> do you ever think you've invited the wrong clown to your kid's birthday party? when the guy shows up and all his balloons are ribbed and lubricated. <laughs> Do you think you've made a mistake? I don't know. Anyway, so much for, for Andy Rooney. He's a bundle of laughs, isn't he? Anyway, I'm thrilled to be here tonight for, what's his name? <laughs> Fivish Finkel. I've known Fivish for Five, six, seven, eight minutes now, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I wouldn't know a finkel from a tinkle. I really wouldn't. But, but he's a nice man. He really is. The only good thing I can really say about him, though, is his name is worth over 80 points in Scrabble. <laughs> it's true. No, I do know one thing about five years. Now, he's listening back here. I've got to be careful. His real name is Bart Stone. This is true. You may laugh, but this is true. I, I, I read his bio, Bart Stone. But when he, you know, when he came out from, from Brooklyn many years ago, Monogram Pictures changed it to Fivish Finkel. That's because they had another Bart Stone working at the studio. And the interesting thing about this, kind of crazy, but the original Bart Stone's real name was Fivish Finkel. <laughs> Anyway, he's a dear man, and he's going to be out in a few minutes, and uh, I just wanted to be here tonight to say hello to you people, and you look like a marvelous crowd, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you very, very much. Thank you.